This particular slide shows, okay, well, how much energy are we really going to need? Well, what it's showing is in today's world, we are using, a, we have already uh, approached and made it to 15 trillion kilowatt hours per year. By the year 2040, it will be 30 trillion a year. That is a significant increase. We have to be concerned about that. How do we curve that? Uh, we have to have an approach that will address how this curve, how this curve goes up, and maybe get it stabilized. Oil. Everybody knows about oil. Oil's been, we've been using oil up like crazy. I mean, uh, I like the way that uh, the president stated, well, yeah, if uh, you look at people when it became a, hit your pocket, you instantly went to a more, uh, a different way of, of driving. Now that the price is back down, we're back to the same old practices. Well, this shows that if we continue along the way we're going, we'll continue to use oil at the same rate. The slope is about the same. We should be concerned about that. I, I like this slide. It's it's one that shows you know in science we've learned how to get out to, into the uh, uh, into space and look back at ourselves, but this one kind of shows you know look at the where the lights are. It kind of tells you with a visual sense this is the distribution of, of energy in the world by just looking at the lights, and that shows you that you know the U.S. we're kind of ahead of the game in many in many ways. And, and a lot of the resource use, it's us in the, in the U.S. that are consuming quite a bit of it. All right, as far as um, power and how energy is produced, it's a pretty simple concept. Uh, these next few slides just says that, well, when you look at the, the concept, all it basically is is taking uh, some type of way in which we're going to turn a dynamo. It's just turning a dynamo, and you then create electricity. So. With wind, you're turning a rotor, which creates electricity. With water, well, our environment takes care of that. All we're doing is capturing the water out of falling water. And solar brings water in the air, drops it in the mountains, and then we pick up the energy as it falls and turns a turbine. Power plants. We have power plants that are powered by coal, gas, uh, geothermal, nuclear, all they're doing is heating water, turn it to steam, it turns a turbine, creates electricity. That's a technology. That's, that's a technology that we know today. And we might have to think about how else we might uh, generate in, uh, energy. The last one is solar. It's the only one right now that you can say that isn't really using a turbine. It actually takes uh, instant light and converts it to, a, to electricity. We've got to come up with other ways other, other ways that we can actually generate the power that we need. All right, now the, the latest thing that we are, you know, us humans, we're very trendy. So one of us is going to biofuels. Well, biofuels have been around a while, um, but you know, it's, it's set up a little bit of a fight between people eating or people driving a car based on, on, on a crop. Well, okay, um, maybe we have to just think differently about how we use and how we approach bioenergy. It is, it is plausible, it is one that we uh, should think about, and one of the things that we need to think about doing is the way that we do it. Right now we use certain types of crops. We use actually um, corn, grains. They're, the biomass that we use there, maybe we should think about using a different type, cellulistic type. And, and those are using the waste, waste products off of our food production industry. Uh, you've heard of switchgrass. We have to think and use other bioproducts to, to create and use the fuel. You know, it, when it sets this up, you know, now in politics and in, in the newspapers, people start to make fun out of things. You know, sometimes it's not really that funny, but it does send us a message. And, you know, little kid, you know, he doesn't know what mom is saying. And even when, to say people are hungry. Well, now they say, you're taking from the cars. I mean, come on. So, um, this is a concept that was introduced, and I've seen it, where these types of concepts are the ones that we really should start promoting. It's a complete cycle. It shows how we can use bio and uh, do a refinery and produce uh, biofuels and produce some of the energy we have. It's, these kinds of concepts are starting to, to uh, evolve and we're starting to see them and they're starting to come out uh, 
Uh, we have a new bio uh, products uh, laboratory that we've just built in co uh, combination with Washington State. Uh, we think that some of the new ideas are going to come out of things like this. But you know what? It's, uh, it's imagination, so it could be other things that are going to occur. All right. For a global, my global strategy, well, the way I would think, there's four elements, the four E's, I call it. And the first one is definitely you got to think about the, the environment. So what's the environment? Air, water, land, and organisms. One of those organisms, people. Uh, if you saw my little running slide, you saw how many people there are and how fast the people are coming. Well, you know, we have to, be, we have to think about that. Second one, economics. If you haven't figured it out yet, economics are global. The recent issues that are happening shows you that it's a global effect. Well, also, in order to implement any kind of global strategy for energy, it's going to take a lot of money. Everything's money. Everything's about that, 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 that dollar or that, the uh, euro, whatever it is, in order to get there. The thir third one, education. I put education in two, two slots. One, we need to educate everyone globally for several reasons. One, so they make smarter and more rational decisions, so they can influence policymakers. And then on the second, second hand, well, where are all these new ideas going to come from? Well, they're going to come from institutions. They're going to come from educational institutions. They're going to come from people who are in those education institutions, such as yourself. And the only way to get there is to educate you. So we shouldn't hold education away from anyone, and it should be part of our strategy. The last one is, as far as a strategy on energy, it's going to have to be a balanced approach. If we're going to approach some type of sustainable energy uh, policy globally, it will have to be balanced. Uh-oh, we lost. Um, I don't know what the next slide is, but. So as I've been looking at how I actually implement a strategy, uh, I thought of these, three, these several things that I need to do in order for us to pull one together. When we start to pull that together and go into our communities and go out to the world, it is what we're going to want to promote. I call it the 4E's. Uh, you can pick anything you want, but this happens to be mine. Um, so, as we go out there, we're gonna have to, there's some scientific things we should keep in mind. This one here, doubling time. If you remember, I said that uh, the amount of energy we're gonna need from, from now until uh, 2040, it goes from 15 trillion kilowatt hours to 30 uh, trillion kilowatt hours per year. That's that double. Well, how much time is it going to take? What is the percent of growth, percent of use? It comes up to 2.3. Well, so as you start listening to people in, in the public talk about a consistent growth, use this simple calculation. It'll tell you how much time it's going to take to double it, or time to, to double the, the use. Well, you cannot violate the first and second law of thermodynamics. First law is, is talks about energy can only be, uh, can only be uh, cannot be created, cannot be destroyed. It only can be changed, only can change forms. Also, there's the, the concept of energy, free energy and how much energy can actually be used for work. We can't violate those. Now, on the issue of sustainability, the first law of sustainability says. We cannot sustain continued population growth, and we cannot sustain continued increase in consumption. That is not achievable. So we have to think about those when we thought, think, and how we're going to approach a sustainable policy for energy. Education, as I say, well, there are a number out there that says, we just rely on a scientist, we'll just come up with a new idea, and we'll save everybody's bacon. That's not going to happen. All that's going to happen is that we're going to come up with different ways of being a little more sustainable. Education is important, but it's not truly the big savior. We do not want to think of it that way. We want to think of it how it improves things, but it's not where all of a sudden there's going to be a new discovery. I will say, though, that in the uh, 19th century, there wasn't fission. In the 20th century, we came up with fission, so we're now able to do nuclear power. Well, what's the next fission in the 21st century? 